Get on your knees like the dogs you are, all my fellow feature outlaws, as this is Card Games vs. Humanity, and I am that NK, aka Double G. Here with another weekly recap of your favorite Saturday morning Beyblade slinging group of heroes. Of course, I'm talking about Yugi Moto and his friends. So, as per usual, if you enjoy your stay, don't forget that sub and that bell, hit that like, and leave a comment telling me if you want to challenge me to a Beyblade competition after the episode. A match you will lose. Our episode begins today with a mysterious and not at all bland Big Five having a meeting with Pegasus about the current state of affairs. Five men that Kaiba hired because he trusted them dearly, so it's just such a shame that, you know, after he lost one duel, they're willing to take over his company and attempt murder. Worried that if he reaches the island and rescues Mokuba, it'll ruin all their plans, but Pegasus assures them not to lay a finger on Kaiba as he wants all the snuggle time to himself. Kaiba is helicoptering his way to Duelist Kingdom because he doesn't have that sweet-ass blue eyes jet yet. That's actually a real card, and oh Jesus Christ, here's another flashback of his duel with Yugi. You're a good duelist, Kaiba. But not good enough to stop Exodia. Okay, I'm a hundo percent sure that Yugi did not say those words when they were dueling. I love it when character flashbacks make their own retcon attempts. Despite losing to Yugi and then later admitting it in his duel while he helped him, Kaiba refuses to use the heart of the cards as his way of dueling, promising to both save Mokuba and kill the Big Five once he gets home from work. We head back to our heroes who are seen sleeping outside of this tent because, of course, Taya can't trust any of those horny teenage boys to keep them hands to themselves. Luckily for her, Bakura and Yugi are busy discussing the dark arts. I mean, discussing their Millennium items as Bakura's Millennium ring decides to point towards Pegasus's castle. At first believing it's because of his Millennium Eye, but unbeknownst to both, the ring actually just points to characters that are more sexually ambiguous than himself. Ever since I first solved that ancient puzzle, playing dual monsters has never been the same. Yeah, that tends to happen when doing so unlocks dark magic that causes evil spirits to come to life within the card game. We then get a flashback of when Bakura came to school from the long lost land of England. And I know what you're thinking. It's not at all unlikely that two kids with Millennium items ended up in the same school. Nope, not at all. And because we haven't had enough convenient shit, in this series already, Kaiba appears in the helicopter right in front of our heroes without warning. Wow! Look at that, Yugi! Wow! Look at that, Yugi! Kaiba wakes everyone up by landing a fucking helicopter about 20 feet away from them as naturally Yugi just runs up to him and hands him his deck like a good boy. You'll be compensated for all of your trouble. Dude, Yugi, that's probably a lot of cards you could buy with that. I'd, I'd take it. Yugi stresses to Kaiba that they have a common enemy in Pegasus, that they should team up and work together as friends. To everyone's shot, Kaiba's a bit of a dickhead and refuses the help, something that pisses Joey off greatly for no reason other than how dare you refuse our company. Oh no, apparently Joey just says everyone here has something important to fight for and that Kaiba has to wait in line. He knows better, no cutsies. Nice grip. Let me show you mine. You know, when I try to say the same thing to women, they just... They just run away screaming. Joey gets thrown in a move I'd call something in between an arm drag and a monkey flip suffering critical amounts of damage. Check his pulse, Yugi. Oh, thank God. I'm still overweight. Now, because Joey is a character of sound logic and reasoning, unlike episode one where he first wanted to duel and then wanted to fight him because Kaiba refused, this time he wants to duel because he just lost the fight to Kaiba. Talking mad shit and claiming that he's a washed up duelist, he ghosts a former champion into a match on the condition that they use his new holographic Beyblade system. And because this is the most state of the art, highly advanced piece of technology that he only has two of, naturally he just casually tosses it to Joey with no regrets that maybe the man he's constantly belittling might just drop that piece of technology out of spite. Kaiba begins the duel by showing everyone his Beyblade skills, summoning the Battle Ox on his first turn. But because he's a seasoned veteran, Joey counters by summoning the Armored Lizard with absolutely no back row or trap cards to help at all. This couldn't have been more simple. That ugly overgrown ox, he cut my lizard in half. Is it just me or does that sound dirty? Maybe I'm just a bitch. Joey skips Kaiba's turn because we don't get enough of that in this series, summoning the Flame Swordsman. Oh wait, apparently a normal Earth attribute beast type monster with no effect just has the resistance to all fire attacks and overpowers the Brooklyn Brawler. Upping the difficulty even more, Kaiba fuses the Mystic Horseman with the Battle Ox, summoning the Rabbit Horseman with attack values that are never revealed. But don't worry, because our hero Joey is a very competent duelist that would never just summon 10 monsters in a row over and over again with no magic cards or trap cards to support it. We would never get a montage of something like that happening. Never. For some reason, Joey is exhausted in this duel, but I guess that's what happens when you raise 10,000 fists in the air, summoning shitty monsters with a giant Beyblade. You're the best at finding ways to come back from behind. Sorry, Taya, but we already established like nine episodes ago that alphas like Kaiba and myself cannot be rivaled when coming back from behind. Joey summons his best monster, the Red-Eyes Black Dragon, destroying the Rabbit Horseman and leaving Kaiba unimpressed. Unimpressed because Joey's dragon is red and his dragon is blue, and red is not as good a color as blue. Therefore, Kaiba's dragon destroys Joey's dragon, winning the duel and causing Joey to go into a mild depression. 
depression. The gang yell at Kaiba for putting down Joey like the dog he is, but he says that attitude is necessary when facing someone like Pegasus. I've seen him use a magic that's stronger than any card. Wow, you know the writers didn't think ahead when they actually let him call it magic and not just Hocus Pocus magic tricks. We're then treated to a flashback of Bandit Keith getting his ass kicked by a small child holding an elephant. I'm not really sure what any of Kaiba's story had to do with testing out his equipment and making Joey feel like a piece of shit, but you know, sure, go with it. The episode ends with Kaiba saying the same thing I do when there's one remaining chicken wing that manages to survive my hunger. This is war for me. Your friend was a casualty. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed your stay, don't forget that sub and hit that bell so you know when a new episode is up. Hit that like and leave a comment telling me if you've ever made food feel like a casualty of war before. Tune in next week where one of our heroes are kidnapped and forced into a duel they weren't ready for. That happens so much you don't even know who I'm talking about, do you? And of course, a shout out to all my patrons. If any of you would like to challenge me to a Beyblade match, don't even, don't even say anything. Just show up to my house and I'll be ready to fight. This has been the Man From Earth with all the girls, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see y'all next week. Later. I love it when character flashbacks try their own retcom attempts. Retcom. And while they believe it's because of boop. And while they believe it's actually because... And while they believe it's because of boop. Jesus. Dude, Yugi, you could buy so many cards with that. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> we then get a flashback of when Bakura came to school from the long lost land of England. <laughs> oh wait, apparently a normal attribute. Oh wait. We're then treated to a flashback of Bandit Keith getting his ass kicked by a small child holding a small elephant. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's just an elephant.